Hello, welcome back. So this episode is pretty exciting for me. It's all about safari gear, and the reason it's really exciting for me is because I'm going on safari. I'm actually going back to Tanzania. This time I'm going to Ruaha National Park, and Ruaha is said to be a very scenic national park with about 10% of the world's lion population and a uh, healthy population of wild dogs as well as loads of elephants, giraffes, uh, hippos, cats, all kinds of cats and it's supposed to be a wonderful park for birds. Very scenic park as well so we're really excited about this. So uh, this episode is going to be about my safari photography equipment. Uh, I shoot Canon uh, primarily. I'm filming this with a Zeiss lens, but uh, all of my Canon equipment is here on the table and it's like in the wire. When they say drugs on the table, that's what this is. Uh, so this is the gear I'm taking. Uh, keep in mind too, uh, I am going for photography. Um, of course, I want to experience the culture and the people of Tanzania, uh, but it's a photography trip and I'm going solo. I have a private driver and private guide. I don't have to share space is basically what I'm trying to say, uh, other than uh, on the small little uh, bush plane that gets me to Ruaha. So I have the, uh, the luxury to take a lot of equipment. Um, I recommend that if you do have uh, an extensive kit, um, that you find whatever way possible to take that kit with you, okay? Um, in many cases, it's a once in a lifetime trip or certainly a once in a savings trip. Save all your money, break the bank, go on the trip, come back, save all your money again, break that piggy bank and go back. So it's not a trip that we can make every day. I understand that. So um, take the most advantage of the opportunity to go on a safari that you can. Now, uh, I went in February, I went to uh, the northern safari circuit in Tanzania, um, Terengiri National Park, amazing. Lake Manyara National Park, nice. Ngorogoro Crater, fabulous. And the Ndutu uh, conservation area of the South Serengeti, mind blowing. This time I'm going to Ruaha. So the gear is going to be very similar. Uh, East Africa, uh, you might want uh, to take a long lens. I'm a proponent of long lenses and we'll get to that in a second. But we'll start with the cameras. So the first uh, camera I'm taking is the Canon R3. Uh, this will be my wildlife stills and video camera. And during my safari in February in Terengiri National Park, this camera overheated, it died, it fried. We were waiting on a leopard to come out uh, from underneath a tree and after three hours of being in the sun, I didn't cover it up, that's on me, uh, the camera died. And I wasn't even shooting video, it was just stills and the camera died, uh, it fried and I couldn't use it for the rest of the trip. So luckily I had two more cameras with me. So I always recommend on a special trip like this, take two bodies. Okay, if you go in with a group and um, you know everyone has their own camera, but uh, you can't put it in the budget to have uh, a second camera per person, then get a second camera for the group and one that everyone is familiar with, something that everyone can use just in case because something might happen out there. So the second camera body that I will take is the Canon R5. Uh, that will primarily be my um, stills camera. I will shoot some video on both. I'll punch the red button on both cameras and see what happens. And hopefully we can come back with some nice footage uh, that I can share with you here on the YouTube channel. Hey, if you like the episode, go on and smash that like button and subscribe double smash. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot guys. Aloha. So two Canon bodies, the Canon R3 and the Canon R5. Uh, when you do take two bodies, I do think it's important that any of your custom settings are set up identical in both. So for the Canon R3 and the Canon R5, my custom one, two, and three settings are all identical. Uh, with that, we have the back button focus set up on the custom one and custom three. Custom two is for fast action, cheetah chase, cheetah chase, and birds in flight, and fast action cheetahs, cheetahs. So that is 
setup with non back button focus, just shutter uh, focus um, because that's easier. Now, the other thing to consider with the two cameras, batteries, loads of batteries for the R3, R3 battery chargers, or excuse me, uh, R5 batteries. Uh, this is the R3 battery. Uh, the R3 battery charger. Don't forget the chargers. I'm taking two for the R5. Uh, the Land Cruisers will have power outlets uh, in the vehicle so you can charge while you're out there. And then of course at your lodge you can charge up as well. Next uh, for the camera we have the small little DJI action cam. Where is the action cam? Oh, here we go. Uh, this is the DJI action cam. We have it set up uh, on the Ulanzi R094 clamp. This is a clamp that I used in the uh, Yamaha Tenere to Waimea Canyon video. Link above. And uh, it's pretty cool, this little clamp is. So um, we're going to use this for some uh, daily vlogs uh, that I'll, I don't think I'll post while I'm out there, but I'll record them kind of like a little diary. Um, and then uh, we're gonna put this on the safari vehicle, on the roll bars. We're gonna open up the clamp, clamp it down, and then uh, we'll have some uh, running footage of the safaris. So those are the three cameras I'm taking. The uh, DJI Osmo Action 4 uh, camera, the Canon R3, and the Canon R5. Now, what lenses will I take? Uh, I mentioned earlier that I am a proponent of the long lens, and the reason I like that is if we have to shoot uh, from above, then um, at a greater distance, that angle perspective is less acute. Uh, that's one reason. Two, um, I like portraits. That's, that's, I like to see the facial features. I like to see their eye. Uh, a long lens helps with that. Now, Ruha, we must stay on the Jeep tracks. Uh, in the Northern Circuit and in Dutu in uh, February, we can go off-roading. So that's something where a long lens isn't as necessary there. However, when I reviewed the photos from my trip to the Serengeti and Tarangiri, I used this lens about 80% of the time. And it is my wildlife lens of choice. It's my baby. It's the, the Canon RF 600 F4. Now, is it a big lens? Yes. Is it heavy? Yes. Is it cumbersome? Yes. Is it difficult to travel with? Not really. Um, you make it a priority. And while it is large, it's not the Hubble. So don't think that you're going to catch like eyelashes of aliens from outer space. Um, but it does make things possible. So this is the first lens that I'm taking. Um, now, despite what I showed uh, at the very beginning of the video, it does not fit in the Pelican case. It has its own little Canon uh, shoulder carry case that I will use uh, for it. Um, easy to travel with. I've done it with, uh, done it all the time. Um, yeah, it's a little cumbersome, yes, but when you're in the field and you have this baby, you will be happy. You will be happy, I promise you. So if you have a 600 and you're debating whether or not to take it, take it. Okay, take the 600. It's amazing, All right? Don't leave home without it if you have one. If you're thinking of renting one, yeah, it could be good too. Now, the uh, next piece of gear I will take uh, is for the 600, and it's the 1.4 extender. Now, with the 1.4 extender, that 600 F4 goes to 840 at 5.6. Now, 840. Man, that's, that's, that's a lot of reach. However, you're having to shoot through a lot of atmosphere. And Ruaha in November is said to have a lot of humidity. There's gonna be heat haze, there's mirage, there's a lot of dust as well. So it's really difficult to get clear, crisp, sharp images shooting at a distant subject at 840 millimeters. So we'll use this for birds that are near or for a larger animal that is relatively close and we need to bring them closer to fill the frame or uh, more importantly perhaps maybe the pattern of the fur or their hide or the eye or maybe the horns um, so that's something that we're going to use the 1.44 um, i'm not gonna put it on in a hurry i don't want to miss the shot uh, going uh, for more reach when we can always crop later so keep that in mind now the next lens uh, going down from the 600 is the canon ef 
300 f2.8 uh, mark ii with the rf adapter so the uh, ef rf adapter it's flawless it's fantastic um you know don't worry about like if the ef glass works with the rf adapter or not because they certainly do now uh, this one does not have the control ring the reason i don't use the control ring on my safari gear is because I'm often using bean bags. I don't take a tripod, I don't take a gimbal. Um, so I'm using bean bags in the vehicle and sometimes um, that control ring can rub against the bean bag or when it's tossing around in the Land Cruiser, um, it could uh, hit that control ring and then your ISO's off when you pick it up or your uh, aperture's off or something that you're not expecting. So we're gonna try to eliminate any of those uh, unnecessary mistakes. But the uh, 300, 300 lens will be very useful um, for some elephants that are distant uh, and then for some of the uh, medium sized animals uh, to photograph them in their landscape and try to give like an environmental portrait of the animal uh, or a lion pride, perhaps if we're lucky, a cheetah coalition. Um, giraffes, I think, might be a little difficult with the 300 because the giraffes are so tall. Um, and then any elephants or an elephant herd that comes close, uh, that's what the 70 to 200 is for. This lens is incredibly versatile and I've been using it a lot recently uh, photographing the surf. And I think in the video Waves and Coffee, link above, I uh, talked about how this is so versatile and so useful that um, I think it should be the, the first or second lens for a nature photographer. Uh, so this is definitely going to make the trip. Um, and what makes the RF version really handy for this type of trip is it is an external zoom. So it uh, zooms in at the 70 millimeter focal length, uh, pretty compact, and it fits in my Pelican case. Um, all of this equipment that I'm showing you, the Canon R5, the R3, the 300, the 70 to 200, and the Canon 2870 f 2.0 lens, they all fit in the Pelican case that I carry on. So that is an incredibly useful case. And uh, I think you see it over here over my shoulder. Uh, I used to just take um, an F-stopper bag or a Click Elite and load it up with all my gear and carry it around the airport. And oh man, it's so heavy and on my back and it was terrible. Um, I should have bought that Pelican paint Pelican case a hundred years ago because it's so fantastic and it makes travel so much easier with the equipment. Um, so the 28 to 70, Lee, why are you taking this lens? This is going to be my scenic lens. And I've heard that Ruaha is a very scenic park. We have opportunities for walking safari there as well. So I think this will be helpful for that. And there is a, uh, a scene that I'm hoping to photograph with, um, palm trees and the Ruha River and perhaps some elephants underneath. And I think this will be useful for that. Also, I, I had the opportunity to stay um, at an amazing lodge, Asilia, Africa, Jabali Ridge is where I'll be staying. So I want to document uh, the lodge and the lodge surroundings um, and just kind of this safari lodge experience. And I want to do that with uh, this lens as well. That'll be for uh, kind of midday type stuff. Uh, in between the game drives. So that's the camera and lens setup. Now, for Safari, I do recommend um, a pair of binoculars. The binoculars, while not necessary, your guide will have uh, binoculars, your driver will have binoculars, but you will most likely want to have a set of binoculars as well. And it just adds a little more enjoyment to the trip. Uh, the binoculars that I have are the uh, Canon uh, LIS 10 by 42. Um, so this is a, a pretty heavy magnification. And because of that magnification, I wanted the image stabilizer. And I get a little seasick, so that's why the image stabilizer I find useful. And it's the same type of system that's in your Canon lenses. And uh, yeah, so a good set of binoculars. Um, yeah. These are a little pricey, but they're useful. Um, moving forward, I'm going back to Tanzania more and more often. Um, beginning next year, February, I'm leading two photo safaris uh, with my local guide that I have there. And uh, we're gonna have a blast uh, with that. 
Um, just like this trip to Ruha, we're going to have a blast. We're going to, man, we're going to have a lot of fun. So a safari is absolutely uh, an amazing, amazing experience. I recommend it to everyone. I do understand it is cost prohibitive, so I can't say everyone should go, but every human should have the opportunity to go. So uh, along with uh, this photographic equipment, uh, we are taking uh, a little camera pouch and this will hold all of the spare batteries and spare memory cards. So each camera will have a 512 gigabyte memory card and I'm taking two spare uh, 256 gigabyte, the DJI Osmo will have a one terabyte card in it. And then we have a spare 256 with the uh, card reader adapter. Um, then we will take the microphone and the fuzzy. Card reader, of course. Circular polarizer for the RF 600 and the EF 300. This will be useful for video. That's what I'm thinking anyway. And now, card transfer. Transfer the files. Um, I'm not taking a computer. I don't, I don't have a laptop. So what I am going to take is my iPad. Take my iPad and my SanDisk Extreme two terabyte. And this little guy here, uh, this little dongle, and this will all hooks up and then it'll transfer. And I've even tried it already and it works. So I'm really happy about that um, because when I take all this camera gear, I really don't want to take a laptop as well. So um, this will this will help with that. The iPad um, card transfer and I don't edit while I'm on trips. I like to kind of stay in the zone and uh, stay focused on the experience. So uh, I never do any editing on the trips, not even on my long trips to the mainland. Um, then what else? Bean bags. So it's likely that your safari uh, driver will have bean bags in the Land Cruiser for you, but just in case, take one or two. So I'm taking, uh, these are lens coat uh, bean bags. These are fantastic. I'm taking one large one for the 600 and then one medium sized one for the rest. Uh, this will make it much easier to shoot from that open vehicle and hopefully uh, we can even uh, shoot from the floorboard and so I'll uh, put the lens on top of this and then lie down and shoot through the uh, through the side of the vehicle and lastly as you can imagine it is dusty out in the bush so take a rocket blower or you know something to clean off the dust uh, from the front of the lenses and then also from uh, the camera sensor. Now, uh, it is dusty out there, but you got all this equipment. And if you think that you need that 300 lens or that 70 to 200 to get the best photograph that you can, change lenses, okay? I know it's dusty, but don't worry about that. Especially if you have mirrorless camera, um, you should be able to set it up. I know with the Canons, you can set it up so that when you turn it off, the shutter uh, closes. The, uh, there's a, a door that covers the shutter for you. So that's going to eliminate the dust. So if you want to change lenses, turn off that camera, wait, let it click down, then change lenses, right? And that'll help protect it. Even if it's raining, you know, cover it up a bit, do what you what's necessary, be careful. But man, if you want that shot, do what's necessary to get it, okay? I always say you can only take the photo you're willing to take. Now, uh, another item to keep things clean or to help uh, keep things clean are these uh, Zeiss lens wipes. Now, I'm not gonna take the whole box, that'd be silly, but I am taking a big handful of these. And uh, I keep these in the black camera pouch with the extra batteries and the spare memory cards. Uh, and take that rocket blower, dust off the lens, and then wipe it down with this, okay? The other thing uh, that you wanna take uh, maybe camera straps, you know, you're not really using them that much in the vehicle, but from uh, the lodge or from your tent to the vehicle, you're carrying a lot of gear. So just strap it on um, and that can be useful. Secondly, uh, charging things. We already talked about chargers for the cameras. I think we did anyway. Charger for the iPad, for the phone, um, for the DJI action cam. 
batteries, chargers, sunglasses, a hat, sunscreen, long sleeve. And I really like the uh, hiking pants or the trousers, convertible trousers that zip into shorts. Um, I find those useful in the morning because it's a little cool, a little chilly, and then it gets warm to hot in the day. So just uh, unzip and you're good. Now, um, how can you carry all this gear and carry uh, clothes and everything else? Well, uh, I think the camera gear is most important on safari. So the lodgers will wash clothes for you. Everything except the underwear. So uh, take loads of underwear, and then maybe just a couple of shirts and a pair of slacks and then uh, the lodge will wash clothes for you, okay? So save weight for the camera gear. Um, so what would I recommend for you? Again, two bodies. In the Canon lineup, I'd say like two R6s or an R6 and an R5 um, or the R3 if you want, whatever. But whatever your budget allows, two bodies. What lens? Again, I think a long lens is useful. If you have 600, great. If not, I understand. The 100 to 500 will be an excellent choice. An excellent choice. Gives a lot of range, a lot of variety. That wide angle lens, I don't think you will need, but a 70 to 200 will be useful for elephants and giraffes. If you have any questions at all on what gear I use, what gear you might uh, want to uh, consider, shoot me a question in the comments. Let me know. Um, if you want to participate in a safari moving forward, um, 2024 safaris to Tanzania are fully booked. We're taking reservations for 2025 for the Northern Circuit. And if I love Ruha, we're going to put together a safari uh, for Ruaha as well. Again, photographic centric safari. You don't have to be a photographer to enjoy it. You just have to have interest in photography and interest in uh, being open to the beautiful world of nature um, that that Tanzania offers to us and uh, be ready for some adventure and to have fun. All right. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, if you found it useful, give it a like. And again, please subscribe to the channel. It'll help out tremendously. All right. Take care. Wish me luck. Bon voyage. Aloha. Karibu. <laughs>